thought for the day, brothers and sisters, today I was reading in the book of 1 John, 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17, where the Bible tells us that we are not to be so much concerned about the things of this world, not loving the things of this world. My brothers and sisters, we need to be reminded that Satan is the prince of this world. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ called him that in John chapter 12, verse 31. The Apostle Paul says that Satan is the God of this world or this age in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. And the Apostle John in his epistle right here in 1 John chapter 5, verse 19 says that the whole world is under the sway of the devil. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when he walked this earth, he was tempted of the devil three times in a wilderness in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 11 and in Luke chapter 4, verses 1 to 13. And in the third time when Satan tempted Christ, he said, bow down to me, worship me, and I will give you all the things of this world. Christ didn't rebuke him. As I said in these scripture verses before, Jesus knows that Satan is the God of this world. He said, you are not to wor we are not to worship no one but God and God himself. Now, the world is a beautiful thing in a creative sense. Genesis chapter 1, God created everything and everything was beautiful. I come out here in this wooded area and I see God's creation and I marvel at it. It shows the greatness and the majesty of God, his creation. But it is the system of this world that is corrupt because of the heart of man, which is deceitful and wicked, as Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 tells us. This is why I'm trying to encourage us today, brothers and sisters, to not to love the things of this world. I often say I have a dual citizenship. I, work, I live in America, the United States of America, and I have a citizenship here in America, but it is very temporary. Psalm chapter 90, verse 10 tells us that <clears throat> our lives are 70 years and if reason of strength, maybe 80 years. But our citizenship it should be in heaven. Our mind should be focused on heaven. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, the Apostle Paul said, our citizenship is in heaven. My friends today, sadly, oftentimes we as Christians, and I'm including myself, we're so earthly minded that we are no heavenly good. That doesn't mean we shouldn't be concerned about things that are going on in the world. My youngest daughter was on a plane yesterday, two planes, for over 10 hours to get back to her college. There was a delay on the second plane for a couple hours because of technical difficulties on the plane. She didn't land where she was going until 3 o'clock in the morning. I was concerned for her, obviously, as my daughter. I didn't get to sleep much last night. I got maybe three hours of sleep. But there's a difference between being concerned for your loved ones and worrying about the values and the things of this world. Today, we have a lot of turmoil in uh, America because of political unrest. I'm often reminded in the Bible, which gives me peace, that God is in control, not the Republican, not the Democrat in power. Proverbs chapter 21, verse one tells us, the heart of the king is in the hand of God. He stirs it, God's hand, as he sees fit. Daniel chapter 2 verse 21 tells us that God raises up kings and he takes down kings. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 28 as part of the Great Commission verses 18 to 20. Christ says all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. My friends, if we could just remember that God is in control, we will not worry so much about what's going on in this world. Is it a concern and grieving in a sense, what's going on in the world? Absolutely. There have been many godly men in the Bible that grieved over what was going on in their nation. Lot grieved over Sodom and Gomorrah. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, wept over Jerusalem, what was going on in the day there. Jeremiah is often called a weeping prophet. But if you read Jeremiah, especially verse chapter 23, verses 14 and 15, and chapter 28, verses 10 to 17, why was Jeremiah so grieved? Because of the false prophets, the people in God's temple that were talking lies. They were saying, thus saith the Lord, when thus God does not say, thus saith the Lord. I do not get into politics. 
I don't believe it's the platform of this ministry. This ministry should be about Jesus Christ. I try to quote the Word of God as much as I can so you could check out what I say with the Word of God, which is the final authority. However, here in America, we recently had an election in the state of Georgia where a man was elected to become United States Senator. He is a reverend, a so-called pastor. I have listened to some of the excerpts of his sermons. He never speaks about Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, as the only one for the forgiveness of sins. You never hear him talk about repentance. You never hear him talk about righteousness and encouragement to read the Word of God. All he talks about is political stuff and things of this world. That is what's to grieve us. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17 says that judgment begins with the house of God. Not with the Capitol, not with the White House, not what's going on in the courtrooms, the house of God. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ told us in the Gospel of Luke chapter 12, verses 47 and 48, to him much is given, much is required. We have a bigger responsibility as Christians we who represent Christ in this world, we who speak of God. That's why as I get on these social media platforms, I try to quote the Bible as much as possible. Not to look at me, not to look at my political views or setting my mind on things of the values of this world, but on God and his word. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, you often hear me say this, but when he got up early in the morning in Mark chapter one, verse 35, what did he do? As I say often, he did not worry about what Pontius Pilate was up to that day or what King Herod was going to do. Or he didn't worry about his news feed or his Twitter feed or cable news. He got up into a mountain and prayed to his father. The Psalms begin with Psalm chapter 1 verses 1 to 3. The blessed person is not the one who is in power in the White House. The blessed person is the one who's, who separates himself from the values of this world, the people of this world, meditates on the word of God. He is considered like a tree planted by living waters. My brothers and sisters today, let us separate ourselves from the world. As 1 John chapter 2 verses 15 to 17 tells us, the things of this world are passing by. They're not going to last. Psalm 90 verse 10 tells us that we are only going to live, as I said, 70 years, maybe 80 years. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20, brothers and sisters, your citizenship is in heaven where you're seated with Jesus Christ forever. Take care.